Uh, just for, for my two cents, I was against the arena. It shouldn't be there, but it's here. Uh, so I have, uh, well, you know, I went to the Jay Z concert. <laughs> uh, uh, I went to the first one actually, opening night. But I do think we have to stay on them to make sure that the promised union jobs and the affordable housing comes to play because we haven't got that there yet. Uh, now, in terms of, uh, one, I want to explain participatory budgeting, uh, what we did. <coughs> Let me say this first. One of the big things about engagement, too many of us elected officials view the seat that we have as more important than the community that we serve. Uh, so what we need to do is make sure we elect people that kind of have a different uh, point of view, and if we discover that they don't, then we have to take them out, which is easier said than done, because most of us go to the voting booth have not studied who the candidates are, and pick a recognized name, and then get the person back in the office. So we have to do some work ourselves to make sure that the person who was there has been doing what they said they was going to do. Uh, what we did try to do with participatory budgeting was give uh, some of the power, decision making, uh, back to the community, uh, which is something of an anomaly in, elected, in politics because we don't normally like to give power up. But I found when you give power up, good things uh, start to happen. And this participatory budget started in Brazil. First time it was used was in Chicago by an alderman. Uh, I was one of four council members last year that did it. It was the first time, second time in the United States, uh, first time in New York State. Uh, four of us took a portion of our capital funds and decided to let the community vote on how those capital funds would be spent. Uh, I think it went fairly well last year. Uh, we're now up to eight council members, so we doubled from last year. And hopefully next year we'll be up to 16 and so on and so forth. But it will be up to the people to urge their elected officials to try to use this type of thinking. And if it's not this, uh, then something else. But we constantly have to try to find better ways uh, to engage the community. We tend to get stagnant. We think we found an answer, we just stay there. Whether it stops working or not. But you really have to continue uh, to move forward. And when it comes to young people, I would ask a question. I know that Madison High School is there. There's other schools probably in the district. How many people have had issues with young people making noise, just hanging out, doing whatever? Mm -hmm. Nobody else raise their hands. Raise their hand. How many? Yeah. See, see, people are scared. Kind of scared. Uh, but then I, I'm not going to ask this and embarrass anybody. But how many people have spoken to those young people and said good morning, good afternoon, good night, how are you, how was your day? We tend to not really do that part of it too I much. Uh, but that's great. I spoke to you about one incident. Okay. But uh, but most of us don't do that. And so um, we need to also begin to engage those very same young people and give them opportunities. In our participatory budget, uh, we gave, actually in one of the high schools that um, uh, traditionally doesn't do that too well, uh, we gave the opportunity to have a youth committee to participate in participatory budget. And one of the, uh, and the thing with participatory budget was about 300 projects came down to 11 and then you just voted and there was a certain amount of money until you got to that certain amount of money is when you stopped. So we ended up funding five projects. But you had to convince the entire district that your project was important for the entire district. So if it was in a school, you got to show why someone at the other end would care about that. And these young people went through the process, their project, one three, 300 projects, got on the ballot, and their project was lights for Tilden High School uh, complex and the community voted for it, and their project was funded. So we gave them an opportunity. Uh, we thought highly enough of them to give them an opportunity, and they rose to the challenge. So I think we have to do a better, uh, a better, uh, we have to do better at giving our young people some more opportunities to be engaged and try to channel that industry. I was a bit of a knucklehead uh, when I was in high school, and even in college, I've channeled that, I've channeled that knuckleheadness into, I think, a uh, positive movement to try to get Things going. So we have to find a way to channel that energy uh, into positivity. When it comes to just engaging folks, we, I, we are, I think, inherently know what it takes. And as an organizer, another organizer told me, uh, people are, have, have enlightened self-interest. People are inherently selfish. <laughs> That's basically what that means. So people come out when they feel things concern them. Now I would bet if there was a traffic light out on the corner, for about two weeks, this place would be packed. So we know what gets people out. It's things that concern them right now. The trick is how to keep them after that's over. Um, and when I was doing tenant organizing, uh, they would say, if we can get 10% of a building, then we've done a great job. So if we had 100 units and we got 10 people, that's a good meeting. Now, if you're in a building with 100 people and the elevator's out, you get 90. 
right? so, so, but we all know that the question is how to keep it going. And the trick is to try to figure out something that's always going to keep someone injured. The light's not, the light, we got the light fixed, but another light may go up. Or uh, that tree, remember that tree that we had a problem with? Now we got to tackle that. You always got to keep something going that keeps people interested. Or show them the reason and benefit of having uh, this organization. And you can't stand on your laurels and do that. You have to keep going. It's organized. We have to continually start changing the message. One of the ways we did that, um, you can do door knocking, you can do phone bank, but you don't know what the issues are until you talk to the people. So perhaps before you come next time, you may have a neighbor to your left and you may have a neighbor to the right. Maybe you, can, maybe you can't walk up and down the whole block anymore, but you can door knock to your neighbor. Find out what issue they have and bring it here, and I bet you'll find out that someone who lives on the other side of the district or the civic system may be having the same problems that you are. Now you have an issue that can unite some more people. But you, it takes work and it takes engagement to figure out what are the problems that people are having uh, because everybody has some problems and we just have to tap into it and then begin to show them the benefit of um, having a civic social. And also patience. Um, it takes patience to engage. It takes patience to organize. And it doesn't happen overnight and it happens uh, in small increments and that's okay. But this is a fantastic turnout, by the way. Uh, so this is a, a great turnout. But we always, always want to obviously want to get some more young people. We want to get more people in general, and it's going to take a little bit of effort to do that. Give me that mic.